You guys have been asking me to do this for a long time, and I have been telling you it is on the list. Well, today we are gonna do it. Cereal bowl made out of cereal. One of my main reasons for not doing this for so long was that I didn't think I'd get all the bubbles out of the resin just because of the amount of cereal we're gonna put in and all the air pockets we're gonna create. Now that we've got the pressure pot set up and working, if you didn't see that video, I'll put a link to it up here, I think I can finally do this project. We've got our mold, which is just a plastic bowl from the dollar store, a good amount of mold release, and we're gonna use art resin today. I think it's gonna work really well for this. And we're gonna start off with, uh, 12 ounces of resin, six ounces of resin, and six ounces of hardener. As I've said many times before, if your resin is going to fail, it's probably gonna fail because you didn't mix it well enough. Three minutes of mixing. Bring on the Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops, they're just so colorful and they taste so good. I don't believe that for a second. Now we're gonna to have to do this in stages because Cereal floats. It's gonna float in the resin just like it would float in the milk. Peter, you're so smart. The only reason I know that it floats. There's definitely some gaps where it's floating in the resin. Hadn't really thought about that being an issue. I'm thinking about it now though. So this is a third of the container full and we're gonna pour 12 ounces of resin right over the top. Now that's a stick to your ribs kind of breakfast. Get it, get it, because your resin, because it sticks to the, it doesn't matter. You know what? It doesn't matter. We're totally going to become a cooking show. <laughs> it's going to be the weirdest cooking show on YouTube. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to plop that right into the pressure pot. We're going to push all the bubbles. We're going to make the, it's going to work. It'll be great. And we can check it in about four hours. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. And it is clear as can be. I don't see any bubbles in there at all. All right, so that is working. So we're gonna whip up some more resin here. What we need, let me put this, all right, get everything moved around. 16 ounces, that's eight ounces of resin and eight ounces of hardener. Tiny bubbles make me warm all over. Um, actually, it used to make me really nervous seeing all those bubbles in resin. But now, I'm just going to stick them in the pressure pot and it's going to come out crystal clear. I made this piece of plywood. It will take up room so that we don't have to use quite as much resin and it'll allow me a mounting point for putting this on the lathe. Purple, get in there. 14 ounces of resin comes pretty close to the edge of our mold. I feel like this is a good amount of cereal, but there's still a lot of exposed Fruit Loops here. So I'm gonna pour one more layer of resin over the top. I've mixed up another 12 ounces. That is a very full mold. And the next time we see it, should be ready for turning. Here it is out of the pot, and after a small amount of friendly persuasion, I was able to remove it from the mold. It appears to be a pretty good casting. The cereal is still soft, even though the parts around them is hard. That might be an issue moving forward. This is just a chippy mess. As you cut into the cereal here, it's nice that all the cereals actually got colors all the way through. Pretty happy with that. Got a nice finish on the resin thanks to my scraper. Do we put a coat of resin on now? 
or do we put a coat of resin on at the end? I hope this works. Yeah, I'm really happy with that in general. I just, I don't know, I think it's going to look really cool, very colorful. This is our plug. I'm trying to keep it intact as much as possible while removing resin on the inside. The mount here on the back, it's not a very strong connection. If I was to just turn this away, and I wouldn't be able to finish it. So that middle section just got dinged. I'm wondering if I can knock that loose. So now we don't have the, the support anymore, which means that it's going to be much harder to keep this on the lathe. This thing is so grabby and it's because of the fact that the cereal is exposed so it's super soft and the resin is hard and so it's just really grabby and I've had this happen before with things that I've turned when I make weird stuff if it's just solid resin you get these really nice smooth shavings but when it's this sort of mixed media it's just crazy grabby and um, those every little grab and catch kind of shakes the bowl and it makes my heart race and yeah puts me on edge okay so are we getting close to a bowl shape it is becoming more and more acceptable by the second right now would be a very little value just because we've got so much exposed cereal so I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna take it over to the bench and put another coat of resin in. so what I want to do is twofold first I want to seal all of these pieces of cereal and the second thing is I want to give a nice shine to the resin Just going to cover it up, keep the dust off it while it cures. I got to tell you, we are now three days past where I thought I'd be done with this project. So the resin on the inside has cured, and what I did is I went ahead and I sanded the outside 180 grit just to get rid of any bumps or issues that we had. The problem that I'm having is that because it's like 50 degrees in the shop, it's taking the resin three to five days to cure. This is Sunday, December 2nd, and I thought I'd be posting a video last Thursday. But hopefully this is the last application. It's just give a super light coat of resin on the outside. But be careful, you don't want to use a heavy hand here. You really, I really don't want drips. put it up on a medicine cup. I figured I'd rather have drips at the bottom. It'll be easier to clean up the tiny circle on the bottom of the bowl than it will be to clean up the rim that already looks nice. Cereal bowl made from cereal. I think it's really cool. I'm super happy with it. I feel like it was a great project to break in the pressure pot. After I put that last coat of resin on, I put that on Sunday. It's Wednesday. It took this long to fully cure. And what I did is I woke up this morning at 2 a.m. I polished the outside 
with the highest grid of micro mesh. Yeah, I just popped awake at 2 a.m. this morning and polished a bowl out here in the shop for like an hour before work. So one of the reasons I used Art Resin for this is because Art Resin is actually a food safe resin. What does that mean? Is it dishwasher safe? No. Is it microwave safe? Absolutely not. Is it food safe? Kind of. It's food safe for in incidental food contact, which means that for short periods of time you can put food on it and there won't be any toxins from the resins that'll leach out onto the food. It's not something you want to store things on for a long period of time. So what that means to me is if I was serving cookies on a platter, I would feel absolutely fine putting them on a platter coated in art resin for a dinner party. I wouldn't leave them on that platter overnight. I would eat cereal out of this once for a video, uh, but it's not something I would use every day. So let's break this in. I hardly taste resin at all. 